All right, load securement of a C3500 coming up next. Equipment time, baby, let's get it. Load securement. Yeah, yeah, Rockefeller. We invite you to something epic, you know? Where we hustle out of a sense of hopelessness, sort of a desperation. Through that desperation, we come addicted. Sort of like the fiends we are With LaShawn Parks, you guys could be anywhere else in the world, but you're here with me. Today we're gonna to do a securement video, how to load up a C3500 AT&T truck. All right, what I'm gonna be doing in this video is I'm gonna be putting it on the top deck right here. All right, this is the space that we're gonna be utilizing. It weighs 8,000 pounds, and it takes up about, uh, about 18 feet of the trailer. We need to still utilize the bottom trailer for another load we got. So what we're gonna do at this moment in time, we're gonna go take a look and review the C3500 before we put it on the top deck. All right, here we have the C3500 right here, AT&T truck. As you guys can see, it is box style. So once again, this vehicle does weigh 8,000 pounds. So we're gonna utilize on this. We're gonna use, um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and use straps today. Okay, so we're gonna use the lasso straps put on the tires it's not a big vehicle doesn't wear a lot so we, we're good with the lasso straps and we will get into that once we pull it up onto the deck all right uh the first thing we're going to want to check is we're going to make sure that this truck vin number is correct how do we go about doing that we're just going to go ahead and slide the door open here and uh vin number should be somewhere in this area and if it's not in this area it which it always should be vin number is right here nope nope vin number right here let you get close to the camera that's the vin number and the VIN number that we're checking for is HZ285085. You're going to want to make sure that you always have the right VIN number before you pull out of here. It'd be a bad idea for you to get to the destination and find out you have the wrong VIN number. All right. So next thing what we're going to do, I'm going to have TB do a full walk around of this vehicle that we're going to put on. Then we're going to drive it on to the deck. So I'm going to do a clean walk around of the vehicle. Make sure you do an inspection on it. Make sure that nothing is cracked, bent, or broken. You know, similar to the pre-trip thing before you pull this onto the deck, okay? Because once you pretty much pull it onto the deck, that's pretty much it. They're not gonna replace anything that you found that may have been broken, any glass that may have a chip in it or anything of that nature, and that's a claim against you. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a clean walk around of the vehicle, make sure everything looks good in proper working order. The tires look good, good to go. No scratches on the rim here. Check it for the paint. The paint is a little dirty, it's been sitting outside. So you just wanna look for obvious scratches on this body. I don't see anything. I want to make sure that my mirrors don't have any break, any breaks in them, any cracks. Mirrors look good here. Windshield looks good. Body structure doesn't look like any damage on it. That's what I'm looking for is damage. And before, if there is any damage, I want to let them know about it so that they can mark it down on my BOL so that I'm not charged for this. Everything looks good back in the back. Door is functional. Mm. Probably, a, probably a latch there somewhere. There you go. So this is pretty much a brand new vehicle. So, you know, it's not a whole lot that you need to document unless you do notice something. So, go ahead and close the door back. It's good. <laughs> That's bird poop. <laughs> brand new truck so we don't have to worry about too much but you always want to do that double check question yes sir do we have to make sure every single door is locked or it'll be fine no, no that's fine. all right looks like everything is in in proper order now it's time for us to load this on so right now we got to pull these two ramps right here and set them right there on the deck so that the truck can get up here on this top deck and we're going to pull this truck as far forward leaving about two inches away from the headache rack and trucker brown will be the one who will be driving the vehicle two inches uh or two feet excuse me two Ooh. feet away from the um headache rack and trucker brown will be the one who will be driving the vehicle demonstrating and i'll be the one that's uh, throwing the camera on that. all right so what i'm gonna do right now is i'm gonna take these tarps down off of this and i'm gonna slide the ramps up there all right let's go Yeah, yeah, Rockefeller. We invite you to something epic, you know? Into location right here. 
so that it holds the ramp into place when going down the highway. And we're gonna pull the vehicle. Truck and Browse gonna pull the vehicle for, pull the vehicle on here. And he's gonna leave like the back tires, possibly probably like midway up these, which gives it uh, stability. And also you have the rod in there, which keeps it from moving. So that's what we're about to do next. We stick the rods in here, and then it's top of truck and Browse. Yeah, ha, yeah, wrap it up. Well, this is truck around. All right, here's the hard part, the actual work. We're gonna pull the truck all the way to the top. When you're doing this, you have to listen to the person who's on the ground. Don't think you know. When he says, turn the wheel a quarter this way, you do it. Turn it until he says, up, stop. Turn right, up, stop. Pull forward, stop. You listen to the person on the ground. Don't be a, be a jerk. All right, let's do it. So I can't see nothing. Okay, let's drive it straight onto the ramp. Yep, keep coming. Straight forward. Just keep going till you get up here by the ramps. There you go, just keep it simmering like that. Both wheels on the ramp? Yep. The left wheel's on there, your back wheels ain't up here yet. All right, turn to the, turn your wheel to the left a little bit. Come on. Come over to the left some more. Yep, straight. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming a little bit more. A little bit more, right there. Feel right there. And the, <clears throat> this is how it should look. I, we said the back wheels are still gonna be on the ramp, so it's gonna hold the ramp in place. The rods are in locked in place as well. The truck is on here. And we still got about 32 feet of trail left for the next load that we're gonna be picking up. Going with this load. This load right here is paying $1,800. $1,800 to go out to the west coast. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna utilize this $1,800 to fuel up our $9,000 load, which we'll do a continuation video for that. Yeah, you can bring the key out. As you got, like I said, you want to leave about two feet away from your headache rack right here. All right, this is what, what is good about not having the bulkhead on here is that you can put these vehicles on here and still have a lot of space. So we're about two feet from the headache rack and it's a good deal. If you want to show them the main shoe they should wear. The main shoe they should wear. If you're driving, that's the main shoe. Croc gang. Get your money up. I'm flat that you guys are doing step deck and hauling vehicles. These are going to be your best friend, okay? You don't know what these are so lasso straps uh, you can find these on the internet just look up on the internet lasso straps i can't remember the website where i got them from or i would plug you guys into it but you just look up lasso l-a-s-s-o i believe lasso straps for vehicles with the bull horn with the bull horn on there okay or the bull ring excuse me with the bull ring these are going to be your best fucking friend if you're hauling vehicles okay uh, they're so easy to use. They, the, the weight restriction on them, I'll show you guys on here. Uh, working weight limit is 3,333 pounds, okay? So one of these straps are worth uh, once again, 3,333 pounds. But it just makes it so much easier to use the chains, things like that. And what you want to do, you get the wrenches that come with these. I think I bought a box of these, uh, 12 of them. Boxing in 12. If you're hauling vehicles on a step deck, 
with a, with a ramp. 12 is, is, is plenty, okay? Because that means that you can haul up with three vehicles. Uh, but I paid, I think, about $199. That's investment, okay, as far as that goes, because it just makes your job easier. So this is how we're going to do these. Put the bull, the bull ring on the back tire. You want to put the bull ring to the back tire and the bull ring on the front tire coming towards the front, okay? Do this. Put these up here. And a good thing that you're going to, oh, uh, a key note that you want to do when you're dealing with these straps is you want to make sure that you know where you're placing that strap at behind the tire, okay? Because behind the tire is the brake line, okay? You don't want this strap going across the brake line. Because if it goes across the brake line and you tighten it down and you snap that brake line, you have just officially taken the brakes out on the vehicle, as they claim, okay? And that you're going to pay for it. And depending on the vehicle, so, that's a big claim. Right, depending on the vehicle, it's a big claim. So when you're putting this strap up here, like TB just took the camera, you're pretty much going to want to go behind there once you place the strap, go behind there and make sure that it is gripping the tire. And it's going around the tire and that around the, 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 the hose. As you guys can see, I don't know, you got me on camera over there? Yeah, I got you on camera. All right, as you guys can see, I'm going to point out. Uh, da, 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 go up under here real quick. You got hoses here. And on this back side, you got a hose over here. All right, you want to make sure that you're staying above that and wrapping around the tire and not around those hoses when you when you when you're tightening it down. So that's that's a very very important key key to, to know about when you're doing these flat or when you're doing vehicles just in general. Because you can you can uh, you can do the same thing with a chain too. And that's that's a problem. All right. So now that we got it up here. Right, and you're gonna put it in, you put it in like that. Right. Get your slack on there right. Alright. There are different ways that people like to do these. Just whatever whatever preference you like. Some people like to come straight down with it. Some people like to come straight back with it to where you get yourself some uh if you're pulling pulling like this way with the strap, then you're stopping backward movement. And if you pull the front strap towards everything going towards the V, you're stopping forward and backward movement. All right? But some people like to just come down straight. That'll work too. Or like me, I like to pull like this to stop forward and backward movement. Do I have to be that deep? Can't you stop forward movement from about right yonder? I mean, you can. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, if I do it like this, I know mm -hmm. that the truck is not going to shift backwards. Okay. Where like as here, it still have a little bit of play. Mm -hmm. But here, I know because both my straps is pulling it forward and then my front straps is coming v towards this way so they're keeping it from it balances itself out from from forward and backward movement. Mm. all right another thing i want you guys to understand is with this bull ring if you are not careful and ain't paying attention when you tighten this down this bull ring will start to get closer and closer towards the rim okay and when it gets closer and closer towards the rim and you're not paying attention you're going down the highway and that shit just scratching the rim up okay it's going to scratch 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 so what you want to do is you want to make sure that wherever this bull ring placement is at, that it's in a clear area where it can't get the rim, okay? Also with the strap, you want to make sure that the strap is not going to be coming across no part of the rim because it'll rub and it'll rub the paint off and that's a claim. And that's what they're looking for when you bring vehicles in. Make sure that everything is not being rubbed or anything. So that's some things that you don't want to do. It's, it, it shows the reason why guys come straight down with it too like this because then they don't have to worry about it rubbing. This guy gotta worry about it falling off the truck. That yeah, stairs off. <laughs> but, you know, you can still pull like this way, like TV said, and come through this hook right here, and you should be straight. But you just wanna make sure that you're not rubbing it on this with the bull, with the bull hook, or bull ring, I'm sorry. So what we'll do is, we'll do a TV way. And what I like to hook at with these, when you're using these straps, is I come under the stake pocket, okay? Under the stake pocket, cause to me, you put it under here on these step decks. This thing can this this is rounded where the uh, spool is at, and that and that can come out of there. Okay, that can come out of there. Too much rocking, that's gonna come right the hell out. Right here, if it's secured in there. It ain't going nowhere. It's in a, it's in a, it's in a pocket. Okay, so that's where I like to put mine in it. So now what I'm gonna do? Drop this joint down. Y'all don't know how to put the strap. I don't do it that way. Hey, hey, to each his own. It's a million and one ways to skin the cat, baby boy. 
And then there's the right way. Right. Let you tell it. You've always got the right way. Which is wrong. Hey! Hey! Bandeos! Maybe you need us to move, are you done? You got to wait. Yeah. You got next. Paid off step deck daddy. That's all that is. That trailer old as a champ. Got patches on it and everything. Hey, but is he riding? And is he paid off? Alright, so now got this part. Really don't need to do this because I don't have a lot of leverage for the strap, but it is what it is. I'm so used to doing it that way. Alright, so I'm gonna crank it one more time. When do you know when you're cranking too tight? <laughs> Pretty much see if you see the tire start to bulge. Start out. to bulge in too much. You don't need that much crankage on there, okay? Because what you're gonna do is if you crank it too tight, your strap is gonna start to wear from all of the the rockets. And that's a clang. No, that's you're gonna need new straps. <laughs> it oh. means you're wearing and tearing your your. your what uh, if you pop the tire? That's a point. And the, the, this is no longer secured to it. Right. So, but that's good right there. Bada bing, bada boom. Not went tighter, man. Right. That? I'm sure. All right, man, that's, that's pretty how much you do it, it, man. That's how you do it. That's how you secure these uh these vehicles. That's how I do my strap. Come down in the front tire. Uh, bring it down a little bit towards the front or towards the center. Of the truck, that's how I do my straps. Hope you guys learned something from this video. Please do consider a like, share, and subscribing. Can and you, before you leave, yes, can, before you leave, can you tell us where you got that shirt? Or can you put a link under? I'll put a link in the descri uh, description box below. It's always available there. YTTA shirts all day, gang, gang. Can I live? Can I live? Can I live? Not the hell of y'all.